Okay, so this is the main screen on Windows Azure. If you've never been here, this is what it looks like when you first start up. Um, you want to go to manage windowsazure.com, HTTPS, and it kind of gives you an idea of what they have for services so you can log in. You can go ahead and you can create a website. If you decide to go ahead and create a website, they give you a lot of things. You can go ahead and crea quick create, custom create, uh, based on a standard URL. They do standardize some of their URLs. You can pick a region. You can choose to have a database while you go along with that. Um, part of what else happens when you do create a website is you can also choose from a gallery, and that is their list of apps that they have available to you. So everything from .NET Nuke to Drupal to all sorts of other things that you can go ahead and try. Um, to Django, Drupal, e-commerce, Kickstarter. Again, lots of interesting things they kind of have on their support site in terms of what you can do to go ahead and build your first website. They also have virtual machines, and you got to remember that a virtual machine for them is a blob. It's a binary large object. Um, you have to give it a DNS name. You can choose what image you want to choose from. Um, Ubuntu, whether you want to go with CentOS, BizTalk Server, or tons of other things. You can also choose the size that you want. Um, the one thing that I think is interesting about when you choose size, it's a per hour. So if your computer is not doing anything, it's still going to be the same price as if you are doing things that are heavily overloaded. You can also choose from their gallery. Um, choose platform images. You can have your own images. Um, you can also make your own disks to go along with it, so you can kind of choose what operating system you want to work with. Mobile services, if you want to create a new mobile service, you give it a URL on azuremobile.net. You can create a new instance to go along with it and kind of go through the process on that. And then there's the standard cloud services. If you just want to go ahead and create a cloud service and go custom create, give it a strict URL for your own or you can go ahead and do a cloudapp.net URL. Um, so depending on how you want to do it, it all is going to tie into this cloud app URL. So one thing to remember about that is that it does have static URLs. You can go ahead and create a database from here, uh, give it a name, addition, web, or business size, uh, limit database size. The, the largest you can go is five gigs if you decide to do a limit. Um, you can choose the collation language, and then you can choose what kind of server that you want to build on that. Fairly straightforward. Um, any storage that you've got, if you want to go ahead and do a quick create, it's uh, corewindows.net, and you can dump it in any portion of the world that you need to dump it into. So west, east, Asia, uh, north or west Europe to go along with that. You can also do some really interesting things in storage. Uh, you can do your database that way. You can also do your, your reporting engine in terms of that. So it's always good to have a reporting engine, especially so you can get tied on stuff. And then recovery. So you can either recover things or do a backup vault. But um, again, I'm using a preview program, so I really can't see that right now. You can also go ahead and do a virtual network, which I think is interesting in terms of making an affinity group, give it a name, put it in a spot, um, and basically go through and design a virtual network. You can also design a local network. You can also bring up and register a DNS server, especially if you have uh, your uh, domain name already picked out. Local networks are kind of interesting. You pick, and that ties back to your VPN at your home site. So you can connect your home to the virtual network that you're building out here in Azure. SQL reporting, always good. Again, we talked about that just for a minute. Uh, service name, you can only have one per region. So if you have multiple regions, you can have multiple SQL reporting engines So kind of going into it. And then bring that all back via your own network and not have a problem with it. And then there's some interesting add-ons down here you can do. These are things you can purchase. So you can actually get monitoring um, dynamics, address checks. So you can actually buy data, um, Aspera servers, off Bing search API if you want to use that. Um, Clear my SQL database, cloud and There's a lot of little interesting things that you can go along here with it. Translation routines, um, uh, phone number validation. So it's kind of cool what they've got. Uh, the thing that I find interesting about add-ons is the data that you can actually go ahead and buy. So you can actually go through and check things to make sure that you have good validation for some of the stuff that you may be building. Then the service bus. Service bus is interesting. No namespaces, but you give it a new namespace at servicebus.windows.net, and you can plunk it into the region that you want to plunk it into, and then kind of go from there and see how you want to go ahead and do that. And we'll be talking about what all these things mean here in a little bit. Media services. If you want to create a media service account, name, create a new storage account to go along with it. Uh, new storage account name. They do just kind of random generate these things for you. 
You can also add up some access control to it. So you can go ahead and do an Active Directory as access control windows.net. So again, it's all kind of interesting, and then you can pick the region that you want to dump it into from there. So, uh, you know, I kind of like their Active Directory in terms of creating a namespace because this gives you the opportunity to do stuff. And if you tie things back to your VPN, back to your um, Active Directory, if you, or your LDAP server back in your organization, you can actually go through and kind of see how all this stuff will tie together and you can actually do a read-only copy of your Active Directory for your customers. And then management certificates, um, you have to upload your management certificates and basically it's looking for the standard CER file. Um, so no big deal, it's just a bunch of crypto. So not a big deal, you can upload stuff, right? You can go ahead and then also new. So there's a little button down there at the bottom so you can go ahead and do all the things from there as well. So you kind of have it a, a number of different ways. You can either go along through the left-hand navigation or you can do new, the delete button. The other thing I think is kind of cool is this little down arrow will take you straight to pricing, documentation, downloads, community, and support. Um, so far the documentation seems to be fairly good if you go into that in terms of how these things work. Um, lots of very good diagrams for you to use and then the different developer centers depending on what language that you're working in. So it kind of helps out in terms of how you want to go ahead and do this. So if you want to just go ahead and you know take a look at the graphics, see how this stuff works out. They actually kind of give you a little poster that you can download so you can actually see how all this stuff ties together and see how Windows this year actually goes. So this is kind of the command console. This is where you do your work in Windows this year. It's uh, interesting. It's very straightforward. There's uh, literally no complications. The only thing that's really going to... Uh, catch my attention is that you actually have to work with their static naming convention which is going to which makes this kind of interesting as you go through um, because basically it's a static URL which means it's Googleable <coughs> so you can actually go through and kind of Google search this thing and see what all is out there for that so that could be considered a security issue it may not be a security issue it depends on how you do it and how you tie things back and forth between your domain and then the Azure web services as long as the URL is masked or part of a robots.txt file you can kind of try to block these things out and not get into a Google searching kind of thing on this one but that's basically the overview that's how this thing looks this is where you can go ahead and you can start doing your stuff with Windows Azure and we're going to be going through and taking a look at how each one of these things work as we go through and we build out these videos